You're listening to 94.1 KPFA in Berkeley, 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF in Fresno, and online at kpfa.org. It is 7 p.m. Up next, Full Circle. Stay with us. Radio Magazine, produced by members of the KBFA Apprenticeship Program. Tonight is day 11 of our fun drive. That's right. Tonight, we will ask you again to put your money where your heart is. But rest assured, we aim to educate and entertain you along the way. And do we have a show for you? Tonight's show features Michelle Shehabe, longtime activist and director of the Arab Film Festival. Dima Shehabi, Palestinian poet and editor. A new play, Habibi, by first-time playwright Sharif Abu Hamde, and music, both old and new from the Arab world. Tonight on the mics, you have a set of fresh voices from Group 35, Irene, and Vista. Keep it locked right here on 94.1 APFA. On tonight's show, we will explore Palestinian art in the U.S., how Palestinian artists bring the Middle East to us, their impact, and how they stay connected with their vanishing homeland and the larger Arab community. In exchange for your pledges tonight, we are offering two different gift packs. The Arab Film Festival gift pack, which includes two tickets to the premiere of the Arab Film Festival, or the Habibi gift pack, which includes two tickets to the world premiere of the play Habibi by Palestinian playwright Sharif Abu Hamde. Both gift packs also include a bottle of organically grown olive oil from Palestinian farmers, compliments of the Middle East Children's Alliance, and an edition of the Arab American anthology Inclined to Speak. All three of these items are going to be offered for the low pledge of $75 tonight, so we will be reminding you of that going forward. So pick up the phone and dial 510-848-5732 or 1-800-HEY-KPFA. That's 1-800-439-5732 or go to kpfa.org and pledge securely online. Tonight we begin with a focus on Arab film. From October 14th through the 24th in the Bay Area in Los Angeles, the Arab Film Festival marks its 14th year. Jen Chen spoke to Michael Shahade, executive director of the festival. Here's what he had to say about the festival and the importance of sharing diverse Arab viewpoints with U.S. audiences. How do you think the festival has changed or grown, either in the time that you've been here or since the inception? Well, since the inception, uh, the Arab Film Festival was an idea that came about uh, because of the negative stereotyping of Arabs in the uh, popular media, in the mass media here in the United States. And the founders thought that by establishing the uh, Arab Film Festival, we will be able to bring images, authentic narratives, and the voices of Arabs here to the United States to proactively counter the negative stereotyping of Arabs in the media. Can you talk some more about the vitality and importance of the festival's mission, especially in light of the anti-Muslim and anti-Arab sentiment that's been getting a lot of attention in the news lately? Of course. Uh, it's, it's vital, it's important, uh, first because of, you know, the wars of Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, and the backlash here in the, in the United States, uh, because of so many years of negative stereotyping of Arabs, uh, in the sense that Arabs are known as either terrorists, or covered up women from uh, head to toe, uh, a mysterious woman, or naked women as belly dancers. These are the, like three, images that people here in the United States know Arabs and when you have images or a caricature image in your head it becomes easier for you to accept them being killed to accept them being bombed and to really think of them as the other 
people who you fear, people who you don't know, people who uh, you learn to consider as your enemies, as the case right now. And because of this fear, the warmongers are able to use it in, in their policies of war, in their policies of discrimination. So the Arab Film Festival challenges all of this, it brings those uh, real people stories. And audiences, when they look at those films and hear these voices and they know about these stories, they discover, well, those are people are like us. It's not like those caricature images in our heads. And then it becomes easy to make them your friends, to get to know them. They become familiar to you. And this familiarity and this understanding increases uh, harmony, increases peace and increases diversity because, you know, someone, I think it's a Mexican poet and diplomat once said that diversity is about life. Uniformity is about death because the more we become one in the sense of one species and everything else dies, that means we're dying. But the more diverse we are in terms of culture, in terms of species, in terms of everything, that means life is being nurtured. And the Arab Film Festival is about nurturing life that's beautiful. Yeah, it becomes much harder to commit violence or to condone violence against someone when you realize that someone could be you. Michelle, a fair number of your board members and staff, including yourself, of course, have uh, activism, community activism, or public policy backgrounds um, in addition to media experience. How do you think the activism part of the festival interacts with the artistic side of the festival? Most of these people... Uh, have a deep concern and, and, and a deep love for their communities and that's why they volunteer and they are on the board and the activism part in any organization means that those people are in direct contact with your grassroots they know who your constituencies are they know their aspirations they know their concerns they know what they look for and what they want you to do how is that related to the art is also those people come to this organization because they recognize that the art and culture is the gateway to community empowerment. That through art you can bridge culture. That through the art you can introduce your community to the larger communities and link with them. And also to bring those stories to, uh, to them. So I, I don't see a big gap between art and culture and activism. Actually, I think they are one and the same because artists in a way are activists and activists mm -hmm. in a way uh, look at art and culture as a way to reach out and to connect and we being here at the Bay Area with the diversity of the Bay Area that's you know speaking the language of art and culture is is very powerful because you're able to speak to everyone that brings me to another question you mentioned um the Bay Area. Um, this festival is the largest and oldest film festival of its kind yes. here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, even Southeast Michigan, which has the highest density of Arab, Amer Arab Americans in the country, only started an Arab film festival six years ago compared to this festival's 14 years. Um, why do you think the festival arose here? And what do you think it is about the Bay Area that allows the festival or has allowed it to thrive here? The nature of the Bay Area and the nature of California in, in general and its uh, appro uh, proximity to, you know, to the industry of Hollywood and, and filmmaking and, and the acting and, and all of that, uh, it's, you know, helped it to be uh, one of the most important uh, Arab film festivals outside of the Arab world. And we're very proud that we uh, are organic uh, to the Bay Area. We're not just uh, a film festival, but we've been here for 14 years, and now the uh, Arab Film Festival is part of the mosaic of, of the art milieu of the Bay Area. People look for it and get excited when it's, when it's here, and that's what keeps us going, and that gives us the strength. I think that speaks to the high quality of programming, too, in your festival. Can you tell us curatorially how you choose the, the films that go into the festival? Well, uh, we basically try to get a lot of feedback also from our, our, our audience, but we try to balance uh, features, documentaries, and shorts. So, uh, you know, every year we do uh, between 45 to 60 films, and we kind of like to do one-third of each. Uh, so we're pretty balanced, but also it's a hard 
hard job because, you know, the Arab world is 22 countries, and then you have the immigrant communities and the and the you know different uh, uh, places like in Europe, Canada, United States, and and uh, South America. Uh, those diasporic immigrant communities present and discuss their own situation, which is uh, different than the Arab world, and that makes you know the mosaic of Arab cinema because we like to bring all of those together so we have films that are made uh, and, and by the way our criteria is films uh, who are by or about Arabs uh, so it could be somebody who's not an Arab but ma making a film about the Arab world or Arab communities so we have uh, people from Europe, from Canada, from the United States, from South, uh, South America, um, making films about their own Arab experience in different contexts, and we show those. And, and what's, what's good about this is the Arab American community itself is learning about itself and its other, uh, you know, um, personalities, if you will, or other parts, if you will. But also, it gives audiences a rare chance to look and, uh, at the Arab experience in a, in a totality, not just in the United States, but what's happening to them everywhere else. Yeah, as you mentioned, Arab culture is by no means monolithic. And, not at all. And uh, that really fits with the mission of the festival, to show all the different facets, the different sides of that culture. That, that's a very important point, because the Arab world is not just diverse in terms of geography but in terms of uh, ethnicities, in terms of religion, in terms of races, in terms of anything you can think of, it's way, way away from being a lump sum like people think of it and people, you know, look at it. Uh, and we want to present uh, this, and that's why when I talk about the Arab com uh, communities, it's not the Arab community uh, in that sense, because, there, you know, there is a diversity here and, and, and there is many and that's the beauty of it and we as Arabs want to explore this and understand it too once again I'm speaking with Michelle Shahadi executive director of the Arab Film Festival Michelle can you tell us about Masquerades the film that's opening the festival on October 14th in San Francisco sure Masquerade is an Algerian film it's, uh, the genre is a comedy and this is a rare chance also for Arab humor to be presented to uh, our Bay Area audience and uh, Los Angeles audience. Um, are there any other films that you're especially excited about this year? A very great film also, uh, Egyptian, called Shahrazad, Tell Me a Story. It's about women, and this is also the s issues that concerns women in Egypt and the struggles that they go through. We have a gay film called The String, which is from Tunisia. Again, it's about a Tunisian guy uh, who lives in France, and then he goes back to uh, see his mother in Tunisia after his father's death. And this is his struggles and his reflection and his uh, being gay in, in that country comes into play. It's really a great film. Michelle, thank you very much for being on Full Circle. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Send shivers when you hear it Regardless of the hardship We'll never ever fear it Alhamdulillah For your perseverance Got me feeling blocked up Like Egypt's border clearing Bismillah May God bless your dead and gone We say we undefeated When they say we headstrong Alhamdulillah For the will to believe in life If you struggle God loves you Man believe the strife Bismillah Please read Surah Yasin For the purest always fall For the furious I've seen Alhamdulillah To be grateful for your place You never know what fate will bring you from the hate Bismillah For the soul's anguish love And the moments our brothers get snuffed out by slugs Alhamdulillah We see through the politics When the missile is issued to kill and follow our kids Waking 
up in cold sweats, I feel a sling. How to love? You could really tell, you see. Turn the news on, heard they sent shells to see. Bismillah. And two hours later in Reza, the floor started pounding and they felt the heads. Alhamdulillah. The head said the policies lied when the house was blown to pieces and an olive tree cried. Bismillah. The shit that said move too fast out the mouth of Hamas and Mahmoud Abbas. Alhamdulillah. We need leaders instead of fickle beasts and wicked streets crippled being triple through the Middle East. God, while we on the subject, please cut the strings off our political puppets. Alhamdulillah. The Lord for them when soldiers creep. Your men thinking that our souls are cheap. Let's speak. That we bring when we aim our slingshot Bismillah The thing you call Israel And the way you defend it shames Ismail Alhamdulillah See we can live together if the cycle of your violence didn't silence our life with all your rifles Alhamdulillah <laughs> Alaykum as-salam Arab jarab when it's harab man Alaykum al-haram Alhamdulillah Tadam on the nas wal hurra We refuse to have any more Muhammad al-Durras Durras Durras Durras, Durras. You're listening to Full Circle on KPFA 94.1 FM. We're your hosts, V-Star. Andy Dene. You just heard the track Hamdela from the Iraqi-Canadian artist Narcissist, featuring the first lady of Arab hip-hop, Shadia Mansour. Special thanks to Jen Shen for talking with Michelle Shehade. For more info on the Arab Film Festival, check out arabfilmfestival.org for a list of all the films and synopses. In case you recognize Michelle's name, um, Michelle has actually become a personal hero of mine. Um, for those of you who are familiar with regional history, Michelle was one of the LA-8 who underwent a 20-year-long struggle with the U.S. government um, for supporting Palestinian national rights and were recently acquitted, finally, in 2008. Tonight, for a pledge of $75, we have the Arab Film Festival gift pack, which includes five pairs of tickets for opening night of the festival at the beautiful and historic Castro Theater in San Francisco on October 14th. Opening night features masquerades, the Algerian satire that Michel spoke of in his interview. And along with those tickets, you will receive a bottle of organically grown olive oil from the United Workers Committee in Ramallah, Palestine, an edition of the Arab American Anthology Inclined to Speak, featuring Dima Shahabi and other American voices. All three for a $75 pledge. So pick up the phone and dial 510-848-5732 or 1-800-HEY-KPFA. That's 1-800-439-5732 or go to kpfa.org and pledge securely online. We now move on to a reflection on media coverage of Palestine. El Taino reviewed the manuscript, 13 Departures from the Moon, by Dima Shahabi, acclaimed Palestinian-American poet and editor. Following are his thoughts on Palestine in the mass media as inspired by Shahabi's poems. If you're tuning in at this moment, I can trust that, like me, you're looking for alternative points of view. A view other than the images mass-produced by an unwilling-to-listen lies-creating mainstream media. The same CNN, Fox, NBC, corporate-branded white supremacist imperialist news. Telling us the genocide is a birthright. Conditioning our thinking into accepting the standard Zionist position that they showed up in Palestine in the 19th century to reclaim their ancestral homeland. Ignoring that the vast majority of the population in Palestine had been Arabic since the 17th century. As I sat in this late bay summer sun, reading 13 Departures from the Moon, poems by Palestinian poet Dima Shahavi, I was reminded that the documenting of our history is best done by the artist. Sharing very personal stories of her homeland, her family, the struggle of her people, I was transported across oceans and seas to witness history. She writes, Barb Wired inscribes the blight on the holy city at dawn. 
The rotten plum light scalding the mouths of fallen houses. The seven-year-old boys surrendering his belongings under a soldier's tightly stitched breath. Prayers and burial lids arguing in the air. And if the city dissolves the olive tree, horizon as you look back, promise never again say, the ancient skeleton of this house once belonged to us. Angels with daggers march through the funeral air of burned children. I want to watch those voluptuous watermelons prune the ash, says one angel. We can't defend this pillow plump with insults, so we beat it down before the jasmine convenes. Without the soil of Palestine, I'm bereft of planting. Soil of succulent green beans, wildly fleeting. Pain dominates, says my father, but your smile bargains with the devils, enlightened loads for dreams. My sister ruffles the sky, cries the boy in the jeep, and my brother lies motionless beside me. But my body will burst into stream. Transcendent poet, how will you tiptoe past a walled-in nation that tramples the lapis lazuli? As the bloodshed continues in the Middle East, the search for an equitable solution must come to grips with the root cause of the conflict. Palestinians' homeland of over a thousand years was taken without their consent and by force. For a full circle, this is El Taino. Portrait of Summer in Bosse, 15 years since her death. When debris melts in the morning breeze, I arrive to the house of half-breed poplars, and my child says, God lives at the far end of lightning. But here there are only rock shadows, arching clouds, and we bend and open to last night's visitor. My mother on alabaster stairs, saying she has uncovered Gaza in desiccated cracks of the earth. Her stories are currents that glide out of her, gliding like my father, as he returns from towing the mountain behind him. My bedroom window is wide open. The earth is reeking of shallow sleep, and he says there is no God but one. What labors through shallow sleep? What aches in my mother so that she bows her dark ochre head to the lyrics of Sabah Fakhri? It's been too long, I miss you as you are the light of my eyes. Eyes belling with water as they followed her father, who walked to the podium with flowers strewn at his feet to unveil Gaza's first statue of liberty. It later crumbled in the square, first its long plaintive shadow, then the blue hush of the crumble. But she is not sure what salted the roots of his heart the death of her young sister, or field upon field of exile. He walked for weeks until he reached the border of Lebanon, the sky rearranging the evidence of place behind him. So I told her, let no guard stand in our way. You've lighted my night, you most loved of visitors. Is this the calamity of roots? Are these the bleeding minutes? the choked tendrils of love surrounding our life. I tell my father that when she died, her oldest brother carried a faint smile and said, Angels have brief respite on earth. But my father is too solemn for stories tonight. Tomorrow they will chop down the blue-green spruce she planted. It obstructs the view of the Geneva fountain from the terrace, the fountain that purred and spun, suddenly attacking passers-by. My mother slipping, her children and friends in slivers behind her. For days, our bellies lunge towards laughter. But my father is an audible in the rain lift of a night storm. Were it not for the sudden blue-green gaze of sky, I would have asked my father for a story, and he would have told me he's known love. In the beginning, my brother and I plowed like Vikings through the village of Bosse finding the smoky dungeon where the duke tucked his enemies away from sunlight's disquieting script on the horizon, from the scent of old bruised apples hidden beneath paper-soft trees, from the rows of crimson rose shrubs that atoned for all the violence it took to make this place as beautiful as legend, 
We ignored the skies that crushed water on the blades of crosses, the blades bending and opening. My brother and I chased sparrows that flew towards the mountain. Then later, we fell into the grass under billions of moon shards, our parents sitting on the terrace, their sentences unthreading the dark. You're listening to Full Circle with Irene and Vistar on 94.1 FM KPFA. You just heard excerpts of Portrait of Summer in Bosse, 15 years since her death, by Shim- Dima Shahabi. Thanks to El Taino for sharing with us his, his thoughts on mainstream media and for highlighting the power of poetry as a tool for documenting our history. In his piece, he quoted Dima Shahabi's poems Requiem for Arrival and Gazol Luan. If you want to hear more of Shahabi's poems, you can hear Shahabi read her work on Tuesday, October 14th at the Tides Foundation in San Francisco. We hope, we hope you like what you've heard so far. And in fact, Dima is a Bay, Bay Area resident, and we are so lucky to have a talent like her in our midst. During tonight's show, if you pledge $75 or more, we are offering... With both gift packs, an edition of Inclined to Speak, published by the University of Arkansas Press, edited by Hayan Charara. This is an anthology of Arab-American poetry featuring Dima Shahabi, along with other well-known poets, including Suhair Hamad and Naomi Shihabni. Uh, This anthology, uh, as one reviewer had, had said about it, it's not just another compilation. This anthology serves a cause. And it's part of what we're offering tonight uh, in both of our gift packs. So if you are interested in supporting KPFA, if you are interested in supporting Full Circle, call us tonight. We are KPFA 94.1 FM, and we bring you the voices of three Palestinian artists in all their breadth, depth, and controversy. So support us with your pledge by calling 510-848-5732. Or 1-800-HEY-KPFA. That's 1-800-439-5732. 1-800-439-5732. Or go to kpfa.org and pledge securely online. Here's a music break in the meantime by the famous composer, singer, and oud player, Marcel Khalife. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> 
You're listening to Full Circle on KPFA 94.1 with your hosts, Vistar and Irene. That was You Are On My Mind by Marcel Calife from his album Ode to a Homeland. Next up, Martin speaks with Sean San Jose of Intersection for the Arts and Theater Company Campo Santo. Campo Santo is presenting the play Habibi by emerging Palestinian American writer Sharif, Adu, Sharif Abu Hamde. Habibi's innovative structure weaves a narrative of a Palestinian immigrant father and son with a series of lectures on stolen art to illustrate the universal struggle to resolve cultural differences and find our place in the world. San Jose discusses the meaning of the play's title and these other themes. Yeah, Habibi is an, a term of endearment, dear one, loved one, sweetheart. I think it can be more or less formal given the circumstance, but particularly in the play, it's, it's something that the father says to his son, who in many ways means, you know, the world to him. So the, that, that preciousness and that dearness, um, I think, captures a lot of what the play is trying to hold on to. This play is part of a series of first time plays by emerging playwrights. I understand he first met the playwright of her baby, Sharif Abu Hamdi, when he was a college student at UC Santa Barbara. Can you talk about the pathway of your relationship with Sharif and how this play came to be? Yeah, uh, Sharif is, uh, I, I call him Habibi often. He's very dear to me and he's very dear to all the people here at Intersection and in particular in Campo Santo. We met him outside of San Francisco at UC Santa Barbara. We had the pleasure to go down there and work for three years in the summers. Naomi Azuka, a great playwright herself that we work with a lot, ran a program that also happened in the summers. It was a summer theater lab and it worked in a lot of ways the way we work on developing new plays which is to sort of open the ideas up to everyone at large as opposed to making it just the production part. So we met Sharif down there when we were working the first time with poet uh, Jimmy Santiago Baca on his first play that we all did together. But we met him then and we've developed this relationship over I guess seven years or something like that and probably for the past five years we've been working very intensely together both uh, with Sharif here at Intersection as a part of Campo Santo, the theater group, you know, like most people, just excited to be part of the new play process and the people we get to work with. And so Sharif has worked on, you know, various capacities, including director. And um, for probably the past five years, though, we've worked pretty um concertedly on developing this his first play and in that time we've developed you know watch him develop many many plays he has about four plays now but this is going to be his first play that will you know be produced it's really exciting to see a voice come to life you know sort of over a process but in, for the most part in front of our eyes Palestinian American in particular in this play too I think yeah I think it's it's a voice that I've never seen on on stage so it's such a deep complex messy and complicated issue this big huge issue of what what of what Palestine is and what it represents and how the descendants of that uh, find their way in the world and find their way in the United States especially and all of us you know sort of children of immigrants how we we carry on legacy and lineage and I think he's done it in a way Sharif that is I don't want to say it's not political because mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's accurate, but is so honest and so precise about the story and the people that are telling the story. It's so honest in a way that it's personal first and family first. Just the fact that all the, the characters in the play are of the, you know, Palestinian legacy and, and Palestinian immigrants, I think it can't help but make us sort of widen our lens or focus our lens to the, the all the issues that are uh, 
the sort of the larger, mm-hmm. too complex geopolitical questions of, of Palestine. But to find a way into that conversation that uh-huh. feels really tangible yeah. and also very up close is, is something, again, that I haven't seen on stage and really helps me as a person that isn't super versed in that mm-hmm. or doesn't know a way into it without it being purely political. It, it's been really amazing. Then as far as of the, the play does not follow a traditional narrative but has two seemingly separate interwoven lines. A story of a father and son which I think the first time I came here for rehearsal. I said the story of father and son yeah, yeah. is a lecture on stolen art. Can you talk about the structure of the play and any challenges this presented in staging it though? He, yeah, I mean I think not to sound corny but always you know challenges that uh, a writer the writers that we get to work with present to us are, are rather more uh, journeys or, or sometimes they're maps of how to figure out new ways that are reflecting the way either they think or the, they see the world and so in some ways it's just a mirror back of what we're seeing and and the the challenge part is just capturing that correctly and i think this notion of of not seeing them as two separate storylines was um is something that happens naturally with the writing and naturally as the play sort of takes course when when even when we've read it so uh, i think it was just a matter of, of balancing that and again kind of like to what i was talking about earlier like how do you show something that is very personal and very organic and very true to family and person first but can't help be resonant uh, you know with three characters that are Palestinian immigrants and how it can't not address the larger Mm -hmm. geopolitical if I can use that term uh, uh, situation with Palestine and so I, I think it's more exciting than challenging, if that makes sense. And I think, you know, I think that that's also what's exciting about working with the writers we work with, and in particular this trio of writers who we've gotten to develop and premiere their first place, is how their voices are capturing mm-hmm. uh, an energy and a spirit into different types of narrative on stage. Okay. You know, and that's, that's really exciting. I want to thank Sean San Jose. For Full Circle, this has been Martin Mwangi.
the restaurant next to the discotheque. Yes, we on the list of guests. Palestinians can't get in. It's playing disrespect. Cops stop us for speaking their languages. It's dangerous. So repeat it. But with history, we disconnect. My evil mystery, so not places. Has she seen the time when it's Arabic to Hebrew? Full Circle on KPFA 94.1 FM. We're your hosts, Irene and Vista. That song describing a changing Jerusalem was People Not Places by Detroit, Detroit-based rapper Invincible featuring a beer. You just heard fellow apprentice Martin Mwangi speaking with Sean San Jose, producer of the play Habibi, running October 14th through November 7th at Intersection for the Arts in San Francisco's Mission District. For more information about the play, visit theintersection.org. So, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, it's that time. Um, We've been bringing you all of these Palestinian artists uh, and commentary, and uh, and along with them, we have some really amazing gifts. So, with Habibi in particular... um, with a, with a pledge of $75 or greater, we have five pairs of tickets to Habibi uh, as part of this gift pack. And that gift pack includes also a bottle of organically grown olive oil ra- grown by Palestinian farmers, plus the book by Dima Shahabi, the, the anthology Inclined to Speak, which also features other renowned Arab-American poets. Now, the tickets for Habibi can be used at any show during the run. Uh, and... Uh, and 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 along with that um the olive oil and the book are all yours for the small low pledge of $75 or more and by the way just so you know if you're interested in those tickets or in in the gift pack we also have an installment plan option so you know any pledge no pledge is too small but if you really really want um the the gift pack that we're offering tonight just keep that in mind as well so Support us with your pledge by calling 510-848-5732 or 1-800-HEY-KPFA. That's 1-800-439-5732. You can also go to kpfa.org and pledge securely online. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Full Circle on KPFA 94.1 FM. Let's get the ball rolling. Call us with your much-needed donation. The number is 1-800-HEY-KPFA. That's 1-800-439-5732. So, you know, we've been talking about valuing the diversity of film, music, and art, and all of that which we access here in the Bay Area. And in line with that, we should also be valuing the Public Radio Forum. Here at KPFA, we bring you original interviews, features, and profiles of people and the events that are happening around you, rather than recasting the same inexpensively produced top billing news. So how much is radio representation worth to you? How much did you appreciate hearing Invincible just now and all of the other great music that we've been playing? Pick up the phone and make a pledge. Call 1-800-HEY-KPFA. That's 1-800-439-5732 or 510-848-5732. You can also pledge online at kpfa.org. So we can only do this because you support us in this mission. We bring you real images. If you remember, Michel Shehade was talking about how the Arab Film Festival brings real images to the U.S. 
And it's not just images, it's not typecast images of folks as terrorists or belly dancers. It's real people. As a station that prides itself on people-to-people reporting, we bring you voices that are not often heard in traditional media. That's why we have Michelle Shehade, Dima Shehabi, and Abu Hamde. And, and these folks are all local, local resources, people who live in the Bay Area and who are doing amazing work. We have conversations here at KPFA that are not often talked about, about the occupation and beyond. We speak about the land that is slowly disappearing in the Middle East under Jewish settlements. And we will also bring you the cultures, languages, and arts that are surviving despite what's happening in the Middle East. We also cover the targeting, profiling, raiding of Arab Americans, Middle East activists, other immigrants, other communities. Tonight, we have a special guest host, Carl Jagbandan Singh, uh, and, a, and a, he's a very favorite colleague of mine as well. Um, he's done reporting on these types of issues. And Carl, can you, t- can you please tell our listeners tonight, why is a venue like KPFA important? Uh, well, one of the reasons right off the bat, Irene and Vista are so pleased to be here with you, uh, <laughs> is because it brings voices like ours onto the airwaves. You know, this is one of the ways that KPFA gets to walk their talk by including the voices that are normally excluded there out there on the airwaves, voices that you don't normally hear from, voices who are meant to be kept powerless. That means women, people of color, uh, GL, uh, GLB. What, what is it? TQ? LGBTQ. LGBTQ. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, that, that was a little dated thing there. That was like 20 years ago was the right thing to say. And, uh, and I mean, we're, we're there um, trying to bring those voices onto the air because it's not just about covering the news that talks about our issues, but it's about including the voices of the people who actually come from those communities. And only in those communities can we uh, hear the real deal, the real word. Um, and if we hear those voices, is it, it, it helps to increase the way that we can can make this world a better place. And so for your pledge tonight of $75 calling us up here at the station, we want to thank those callers who are on the line right now. 510-848-5732. Please join the calls on the line. 510-848-5732 or 1-800-439-5732. That's 1-800-439-5732. In case that's hard to remember, you can call 1-800-HEY-KPFA. Always securely online at kpfa.org. For a pledge of $75, you get to get a choice of two different packs. We have the Arab Film Festival pack. Um, Vista, what, what, is, what, do we, what can folks get for the $75? It's funny that you asked that question, Carl. So just to remind y'all, we've got two gift packs. One is called the Arab Film Festival gift pack. And with that, you get a pair of tickets to the premiere of the Arab Film Festival at the beautiful Castro Theater in San Francisco. And this is going to be a special evening where there's actually going to be an award ceremony. They're going to uh, present the movie Masquerades, which is an Algerian satire that has been winning awards um, wherever it's been shown. It's a fantastic movie. According to Michelle, I'm looking forward to seeing it. If you're interested in that, that's the gift pack you're looking for. And along with that, you would get a bottle of olive oil from Palestinian farmers. Um, And, you know, just to talk a little bit about that olive oil, this is being grown by the Union of Agricultural Work Committees, which is an organization in Palestine that is working to develop jobs, to develop the land and um, to develop the, the, the farming community in Palestine. Uh, and finally, the third thing that you'll get is the anthology Inclined to Speak, which includes Dima Shahabi, uh, who was featured tonight. Just so you know what the phone numbers are to call to get that gift pack, call us it up, is call us up. 510-848-5732. Or 1-800-HEY-KPFA, 1-800-439-5732. Again, for a pledge of $75 or greater, you can get um, one of two gift packs, and you can also pay in installments. So we understand that folks may not have the $75 or may not even want to pledge the $75. Um, we also have other um, other types of gifts if $75 is too much for you. Um, and you can also talk to the folks on the phone lines about that. But 
But any pledge is something that is worth something to us right now. And we understand that times are hard, but every dollar counts. That's right, Virali. Every voice and every dollar counts. Here at KPFA, we have a diversity of music, a diversity of voices, and we know that you like hearing all of those difficult issues, especially the radical voices, the non-radical voices, all of it. So don't stand by and let our communities be silenced. Don't stand by and assume someone else is picking up the tab, because if you're not donating to us, then you can be sure that a corporate-funded entity is donating to another major radio station. Um, Pick up the phone and make a pledge towards Real Voices, Real Journalism. That's uh, 510-848-5732, 1-800-439-5732, or 1-800-HEY-KPFA. You know, we know the solution for struggling listener-sponsored radio is you. Currently, only two out of every ten KPFA listeners is a subscriber. Only two out of ten. So we know that if we can increase that number to even just three out of ten listeners, we can call this fun drive off. And you don't have to give it a high level. You know, every dollar counts, as we said before. If you haven't donated before, call us up, make a pledge. Every dollar counts. That number is 510-848-5732 or 1-800-HEY-KPFA. That's 1-800-439-5732 or kpfa.org online. Yeah, please join that caller who's on the line right now, 510-848-5732. That's 510-848-5732 or 1-800-439-5732. That's 1-800-439-5732. We have a lot of people who have volunteered their time to donate in the way that they could to help keep this station alive. Uh, please do your part by going to the phone. Pick it up. I know you're thinking about it right now. You're wondering if now is the right time. Now is the time. You know, there's so many amazing people here at the station. Uh, Vista, Irene, they're here because it's a, a labor of love. None of us are getting paid a penny, but we are here because we believe in the dream that you helped to keep alive for over 60 years for a democracy to work. You need to have an informed public, and, and KPFA has been there trying to do that, to keep democracy alive in this time when uh, multinational corporations are, are getting stronger and stronger, more powerful than ever. Banks are getting bailouts, you know, big oil companies, and we need to come down on the side of truth, on the side of the people, to say that we still believe in the dream that people can make a difference, but we need you to do that. We need to, we need to have education, we need health care, we need housing, and we need a place like KPFA. PFA that helps bring all our voices together, our town hall in this time. Join us here again, uh, 510-848-5732. Join them on the line, 510-848-5732 or 1-800-439-5732. Always securely online at KPFA. Hey, so what, what kind of premiums, um, uh, a thank you gift, really, a thank you gift for your pledge to the station. What kind of thank you gifts are we offering tonight? You know, we've got the Arab Film Festival pack for $75, and we've also got the Habibi gift pack. Both come with olive oil and with a wonderful book of poetry, and um, both are fantastic. Fantastic event gifts. One's a film festival, and the other is a theater. Uh, the opening of Habibi. So listen, you know, uh, Carl. Carl just hit it on the head. We face so many issues today. We're so frustrated and angry about how our tax dollars are spent, and we have so little control over what's going on with our dollars. Here's a place where you have control. Here's a place where your tax, your tax dollars or your dollars, rather, are actually going directly to services that you are benefiting from or you take advantage of. And you know it. When your dollars come to this station, they directly translate into voices on the air, stories on the air. You know, we, we're angry right now that our, that our dollars are spent on Iraq. Afghanistan, Israel, Colombia. Our tax dollars are ending up funding projects and actions that we oppose. The good news, though, is that you can redi redirect. You can speak with your money here. And there are very few places right now where you can do that. Your donation to KPFA is tax deductible. And you can choose to pay more or less as you want. Again, the phone numbers are 510-848-5732. That's, again, that's 510-848-5732 or 1-800-HEY-KPFA, 1-800-439-5732. Please, we have a caller on the line. Join them. We know 
that you're thinking about that. If, if you're listening right now and you have never pledged to KPFA, please understand that we need your support now more than ever now in order time. to stay alive. Now is the time. Now is the time. Step up. No amount is too large. No amount is too small. If you've got a large pledge out there, if you've got deep pockets, please dig deep for the folks who can't make it. And for folks who, who can't, any amount, any amount that you can give is a vote to the station. Let us know. That's right. Supporting local activism by providing coverage of local issues. KPFA is bringing Bringing you true through the voices of your own community, so support us in this mission. Pick up the phone and call 510-848-5732 or 1-800-HEY-KPFA. Online, that's kpfa.org. Okay, so again, those phone numbers are 510-848-5732 or 1-800-HEY-KPFA, 1-800-439-5732. Please keep in mind, the people who work here care about community. We care about social justice, and everybody here is doing two, three, four jobs, and they are working so hard for you and for, for a better world. Now, stay tuned for a special public message for Pakistani flood relief. Two, three, four, The floods in Pakistan started in July of this year, and it was caused by 10 times the rain than expected in that area at that time. That has resulted in 20 million people are affected by the flood. Mushal, a non-profit organization, is organizing a walk to save the children. This walk will take place on October 2nd, which is a Saturday in San Ramon Central Park. Right now, what we're seeing is 20 million people affected. We're seeing almost 3.5 million children children needing help. There's a huge urgency from the world at large to help this humanitarian cause. Also to keep in mind is that all donations, of course, uh, are charitable donations and 100% of the funds generated at this walk will be donated to the cause. Our website is www.mymashal.org and my name is Faraz Sattar and my contact is 925-699-8563. Well, that brings us to the end of tonight's show. Thanks to all of you who called in and pledged. We'd like to thank Frank, Dana, Steve, Angela, all of whom called in to pledge tonight. And also, we'd like to thank the Middle East Children's Alliance for donating the Palestinian olive oil. Um, It has been a great boon. Well... Tune in next week to Full Circle at 7 p.m. on KPFA. We are still accepting applications for the next crop of apprentices. If you want to be in the hot seat, if you want to join us, get yours in by October 19th at 5 p.m. You can download an application on our website at kpfaapprentice.org. You can also check out our archive shows at kpfa.org. Special thanks to our production and technical interns from the KPFA Apprenticeship Program, Group 35, Sunlo Sauti, Sunlo Ongea. We are V-Star, Irene, Sam, Felix, El Taino, Carmen, Martin, Daishi, Jen, and Reishi. Our executive producers are Miss M and Miss Renee. Our technical director is Freewheelin' Franklin. Our intro music is produced by Source of Labor, and our outro music is produced by B. Tandre. If you have any questions or topics for future shows, give us a call at 510-848-6767, extension 627. Holla! Or send an email to fullcircle at kpfa.org. With Sam the Shallow and B-Boy holding down the controls, we've been your hosts, V-Star and Irene. Thanks for joining us tonight on Full Circle and stay tuned for La Onda Bajita. Her father was assassinated in 1996. Her aunt, Pakistani Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto, was assassinated in 2007. Her uncle is now the president of Pakistan. Her powerful new book is Songs of Blood and Sword, a daughter's memoir. She is the fascinating, 